Hola amigos, que tal? It's Joe here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. Have a bit of a chat about what's going on here in Spain. Have a look at some of the newspapers around the country. Then at the end of the video, we'll go into the comment section and check out what is happening there. Now I'm coming to you today from a secret location here in Castilla. I'm not going to tell you guys where I am today, but all I'm going to say is that this area here is known for a very, very good quality red wine. I'm sitting here in a picnic area at the base of the town, what they call in Spanish a merendero, and I'm surrounded by a couple of the local bodegas. The Duero River is about 200 meters over there to my right, and as you guys know, I am following that river from Valladolid into the province of Zamora, which is where I currently am. Now we'll go into the news, and apparently there is another corruption scandal breaking in Spain on the island of Mallorca. Apparently there's a corruption scandal there involving the Port Authority, and according to the newspaper El Mundo, the leader of the Balearic Islands, Ms. Armengol, may have some connection, allegedly. As we can see from this headline, Francina Armengol respaldó en una reunión secreta al jefe de Puertos de Baleares tras su detención. A telephone conversation reveals that the Balearic president manifested her support for the main person involved in the corruption scandal. Now, I'm not a full bottle on this corruption case, but apparently it's related to moorings and other contracts that were given out by the Port Authority there in Mallorca. And as we saw in that headline, we're talking about a corruption network. Now, of course, this is not the first corruption scandal to take place in the Balearic Islands. About 10 years ago, there was a big scandal there called Caso Nos. There was also a Palma Arena scandal involving a sports center there, I believe, and it brought down the PP government at the time in the Balearic Islands. I think the president's name was Jaume Matas. I'm not sure if he spent time in prison, but I know that the king's brother-in-law did spend time in prison. In fact, I think he's still there now, or he might have been released recently. So the dreaded problem of corruption here in Spain again making headlines, unfortunately. Now, the Cuban social crisis is dominating headlines here in Spain today. Apparently, somebody was killed yesterday during protests in Cuba. And one of the new members of the government here in Spain, the spokesperson for the government, was criticized yesterday because she didn't recognize that Cuba is a dictatorship. Apparently, some of the opposition parties here in Spain were upset yesterday because the Spanish government didn't call the Cuban regime a dictatorship. And the Podemos side of the coalition government came out yesterday and said that Cuba is not a dictatorship. And that set off a debate here in Spain. Is Cuba in the hands of a dictatorship or is it not? That is the question. And the new foreign minister here in Spain seemed to contradict Podemos when he said that people there should be able to protest freely and not have to worry about government repression when it comes to protests and things like that. So again, division here in the coalition government between the socialist side and the Podemos side. Now, it seems that the word curfew is being thrown around a lot here in Spain again. We know that the Valencian community has imposed a curfew in, I think, 32 municipalities. And today, Catalonia is also talking about reinstating a curfew. We can see that Catalonia doubles national indicators of the pandemic, and they're thinking about reinstating the curfew. The incidence rate and hospital occupation doubles the national average because of the fifth wave in this autonomous community. And the government in Catalonia is studying restrictions similar to the ones recently implemented in the Valencian community. So there we go, not good news on the health front as curfews are reinstated in various autonomous communities around the country. And the objective of these curfews, as we know, is to stop nighttime mobility stop people getting together, stop people traveling, and the autonomous communities are hoping that these new measures will bring the COVID-19 incidence rate down again here in Spain. We'll have a quick look at the countrywide incidence rate because we haven't done that for a couple of days, and we can see that it's now up to 436. Hospital admissions are up 62% on previous data. And if we have a look at the main COVID hotspot, Catalonia, we can see that the incidence rate there is a whopping 1,014, and hospital admissions are up there 120% on previous Previous data. And even where I am here in Castilla Leon, the incidence rate is quite high at 713. If we have a look at the all important vaccination campaign, we can see that more than 46% of the population are completely vaccinated and just under 60% of the population have received at least one dose. But the good news is that the health situation in the Madrid community seems to be improving, especially when you read headlines like this one Así está Fernando Madrid, la quinta ola. Rápida detección de los brotes y aislamientos estrictos de los positivos. So a quick detection of outbreaks in Madrid and isolation of positive cases, and that is how Madrid is slowing down the coronavirus spread. So while the rest of the country seemingly has an out-of-control situation, in Madrid, things are going well. Now let's leave the news there and go into the comment section and check out what is happening there. We'll have a look at this one here from Arthur. Whilst you are out and about, is it possible to pinpoint your position on a map? 
I had the privilege of working for MZOV who took their initials from the major towns on the railway line they built from Madrid to Vigo. Yeah, Arthur, thanks for the comment. I said at the beginning of the video that I'm not going to tell people where I am today, but I've changed my mind, so here you go. And as you can see, I'm very close to the city of Toro here in Castilla Leon, or in English, Bull. And there are lots of interesting places to see in this part of Spain in deep Castilla Leon, many, many cities that are very, very attractive, lots of architectural delights here. Culturally, it is very important as well, and it also has great food and wine, which is one of the reasons that I am here. One here from Elizabeth, I'd be interested to know why you have an aversion to Murcia. In your report, you commented on Alicante, Valencia, and Andalusia omitting Murcia, where the city had the highest recorded temperature yesterday in the country. Living in Murcia, I have noticed your omission in other reports. Why? It's only a small, well-managed region, but never gets comments or praise from you. Elizabeth, thanks for the comment, and sorry to see that you were disappointed that I don't often mention the small region of Murcia, and the reason I don't mention it very often is because it is small, and it often flies under my radar. In fact, Murcia seems to fly under a lot of people's radars here in Spain, except people living in Murcia. And the only time I can remember it being reported recently in the press is when there was a motion of no confidence down there a couple of months ago, and that sent shockwaves around the whole country. But I'll keep your comment in mind and try to mention Murcia a little bit more frequently in the future. One here from Marion was in Marbella two nights ago. No keeping distance and not many masks being worn. Yeah, Marion, thanks for the comment, and that does seem to be one of the big problems that we have in Spain here at the moment. Too many people getting together in the same place and not a lot of people wearing masks. And that is one of the things that is being blamed for the high incidence rate that we currently have here in Spain. Spain's chief health officer, Fernando Simon, came out yesterday and said that there's no point blaming the Delta variant. We need to blame ourselves and people need to stop gathering in large numbers. But as we know, it's summertime here in Spain and that's what people do, especially young people. They get together, they have parties, they have street drinking parties, and that has been one of the big problems for the last month or so. But it's not only young people, they have been copying a fair bit of the blame here in Spain recently because COVID-19 cases are increasing among younger generations, principally because they're not vaccinated, but other groups of people are also getting together because as I said, it's summertime and people in general love to party. One here from Mary. Hi Stuart, looks beautiful where you are. We also have had a few days of sunshine in the UK. Restrictions are slowly being lifted in the UK, hopefully back to some sort of normality at last. Take care. Yeah Mary, thanks for the comment and good to see that you've got a little bit of sunshine there in the UK. And if you want some of ours, you can have it because it's been very very hot here recently. And I have seen that restrictions in the UK are being lifted this month. I think it's the 19th when the majority of restrictions go away, or perhaps all of the restrictions that you have had in place for the last 18 months. That is not the case here in Spain, unfortunately. And as we know, more restrictions are coming in on a daily basis. Curfews, limits on how many people can gather in the same place at the same time. So it looks as though Spain is heading in the opposite direction to the UK. So what's the better option when it comes to dealing with this pandemic? Do we take the UK's approach and completely get rid of restrictions? Or do we go down the Spain line and bring restrictions back? I don't know, time will tell. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.